Did you watch the first video about breakfast that I posted last week? If you haven't, it would be very beneficial to watch that one before this. Most medical professionals believe that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. So let's see what different countries have to say about it. Here's a table with international recommendation for breakfast. In the UK, they said skipping breakfast won't help you lose weight, and you could miss out on essential nutrients and end up snacking more. In Australia, they said research shows having breakfast regularly is associated with the lower levels of overweight and obesity. And in the States, the majority of observational research says breakfast is associated with a lower BMI and decreased obesity risk. It's important to note that skipping breakfast is associated with a higher BMI and increased obesity risk. And they recommend a cereal-based breakfast and low-calories breakfast. Lastly, let's look at New Zealand. They say breakfast is associated with a range of positive outcomes, including better nutrient intake and a healthy body weight. So basically, this guideline recommends a breakfast if you want to lose weight. And they say if you don't eat breakfast, you will feel more hungry and overeat. But recently, this trend has been changing, hasn't it? That's because more studies are coming out saying you don't necessarily have to eat breakfast. The idea that you must eat breakfast comes from many observational studies. Observational studies are, as the name suggests, based on observation. They have a low level of medical evidence. This picture is called the quality of evidence pyramid. The higher you go, the stronger the evidence. Research papers below observational studies have a low evidence levels and should only be referenced. From control studies and up, they have a higher level of evidence and can be used to provide medical evidence. The difference in evidence level is significant, so even if there are 100 observational studies, their evidence might not be as strong as one RCT. So why is the evidence from observational studies weaker? Let me give you an example. Imagine a researchers observe that more firefighters at a scene lead to more damage. This is obviously not true, right? It's not that more firefighters cause more damage, but the bigger fires requires more firefighters. This is similar to how observational studies can lead to incorrect conclusions. Here's a funny observational study. The red line shows the consumption of margarine in Maine, and the black line shows the divorce rate. They look similar, don't they? Does that mean Margarine consumption is strongly linked to divorce rate? Obviously not. Another example. The graph shows internet usage and the breast cancer death. It implies that as more people use the internet, more people die of a breast cancer. It's ridiculous, right? But that's how observational studies can sometimes present misleading conclusions. We should use them as a reference only because their evidence level is low. Let's analyze observational studies about breakfast. The subject is people who weigh less tend to eat breakfast. Why is that? People who skip breakfast are more likely to be lazy compared to those who eat breakfast. They're also less likely to exercise. They might have a habit of eating late at night and sleeping in. They might eat more junk food they might have irregular eating and sleeping habits. So the better interpretation is people who eat breakfast are more likely to have healthier lifestyle habits. It's not about breakfast itself. Encouraging healthy lifestyle habit is key, not just a breakfast. This is similar to the firefighter example I mentioned earlier. If people with similar lifestyle skip breakfast, do they gain more weight? This is why controlled trials have stronger evidence. Isn't it strange to think eating twice instead of three times would lead weight gain? Observational studies do not establish causation. If we were to investigate the relationship between margarine and divorce, we would need to control variables and compare two groups, one eating margarine and one not. This is called randomized controlled trial, RCT. 
which provides a stronger evidence. Even if a RCT showed higher divorce rate with the margarine consumption, scientists should avoid making hasty judgments, especially in the medical field. Anecdotal evidence is widespread, particularly concerning incurable disease like cancer. However, doctors cannot recommend such thing to patients without solid evidence. They can refer to their experience, but giving medical advice based on the anecdotal evidence is uh, inappropriate. Now, let's look at the RCT studies on breakfast and weight changes. This graph shows that whether people eat breakfast or skip it, there is a hardly any weight difference. Another RCT shows that in groups with the normal weight, those who skip breakfast lost more weight. Most of this weight loss was fat. In obese group, both breakfast eater and skippers gained weight. The weight gain was more prominent in those who ate breakfast, and the most of it was fat. In those who skipped breakfast, the fat gain was much less. Like this, RCT studies show results opposite to those of observational studies. Here is another RCT studies. In obese adults, those who skipped the breakfast had a total daily calorie intake of 330 calories less. Remember the table I showed at the beginning? It said you would snack more if you skipped breakfast, leading to weight gain. But the RCT showed 330 calories less, meaning there's no clear compensatory overeating. Even if you overeat, eating one less meal would mean consuming fewer total calories than someone who eats three meals. This goes against the guideline. Here's another RCT. In lean adults, those who skipped the breakfast had a total daily calorie intake of 539 calories less. In lean individuals, skipping breakfast can lead to meaningful weight loss. This strengthened the causality. To summarize, in lean individuals, skipping breakfast caused a slight increase in the next meal intake. However, this next meal effect is a temporary. Interestingly, obese individuals show similar energy intake at lunch. The notion that compensatory overeating leads to further obesity is weakly supported. You know what I mean? Are you guys following okay? This RCT study also showed that obese people who skipped the breakfast didn't increase their compensatory intake at lunch, nor did their appetite increase. RCTs consistently show similar results. Let's look at the myth that um, skipping breakfast slows down metabolism, leading to weight gain. In normal weight groups, the resting metabolic rate showed a difference of only 11 calories in two measurements. That's almost identical. In obese group, the difference was only 74 calories. Again, very little difference. So it's safe to say skipping breakfast doesn't affect metabolism. Now, let's look at the meta-analysis, which is the highest evidence quality research method. This study analyzed several RCTs. Those who ate breakfast had a total calorie intake of 259.8 calories higher. Compensatory intake was minimal. The weight difference was about 0.44 kg, a very small difference. The clear conclusion is that skipping breakfast doesn't lead to weight gain or obesity. The conclusion of this study states that eating breakfast is not a good strategy for weight loss. It also cautions against recommending breakfast for weight loss in adults, as it could have opposite effect. Of course, I'm not saying that skipping breakfast will make you lose weight, but I wanted to highlight that the common belief that you must eat breakfast to lose weight isn't accurate. Lastly, here's an article from New York Times in 2016. I have exerted the part I want to share. I will post the full text in the community. Just because many experts or government agencies say something doesn't make it absolute true. Unlike 20 years ago, now we live in an ocean of information. It's natural for experts to have a different opinion on the same topic. Don't be swayed by authority or the media. Think critically and find the answer yourself. I hope this video helps you find the truth in the sea of information. So if you found it helpful, please hit the like this video. And remember, health is wealth, so invest in yourself. This is Dr. Sean, making health easy for you. See you next time.